Well, yesterday I found out that my grid tie inverter has stopped working again. This time it's the AC side that's went, and the DC side is still fine. I can still get a red light to come on when I put power to it. So, it's like, it's this MOSFET here that's gone. I was measuring it with my, the continuity function on my multimeter, and it was coming up as just a short circuit across um, all legs on it. So, that MOSFET is shot, it will have to be taken out and replaced. Um, I've actually replaced AC side vets on this before. Um, I replaced two of them, if I remember correctly. I didn't replace the whole lot. So, maybe it's one of the old ones that's left that has uh, finally given up. So, I'll get all desoldered and I'll try and remember what the part number is and then I'll get more ordered. The failed MOSFET is an F, um, let's see, F30N60E. And uh, I think the ones that I bought were the, well, the one, the one that's still working anyway, is F30NM60ND. So, F30NM60ND is the ones that are working. And there'll be another one of the F30N60E that will be working. Um, but I'm just going to replace both of them, so they should all be the same. So I will get two of those ordered and then I'll be back when I get them replaced and then the whole thing tested. Okay, um, so the two MOSFETs you see there in the middle, they're the ones that I had replaced um, previously when the AC side had failed. They're the F30NM60ND and the original ones are the F30N60E. So I've placed the order and it wasn't cheap, I'll tell you that. And I'm just waiting for them to arrive. So to buy two of them cost £14.63 so, and that is quite a lot um, for just two MOSFETs but these are the only ones that I could find so um, yeah it is, it's a horrendous price and that's the seller that was selling them um, but um, they are the MOSFETs that I need so I have to get them so today the two replacement F30NM60ND MOSFETs for the grid tie inverter arrived and in good time too so wouldn't expect anything less considering the amount of money I paid for them for just two MOSFETs and I got this too which is um, to go in a, a large brushless motor that I've got um, a Perm PMS120 it's a 7 kilowatt motor and um, that's for a, a different project altogether maybe a generator. Well, we will get these soldered in and see if it works. The inverter has been lying under my bed in this box so just a, as you can see a fair amount of oil has soaked out of it so the MOSFETs are just there. I think it's the two ones, two ones that have bent over that I'll be replacing. Yes it's those two so they should all be the same and I'm fairly confident that it will work but um, when you're um, soldering them after you've soldered them in it's always best to connect a resistive load up in series with the inverter so that if there is a short circuit it's not going to blow fuses so uh, that's a good practice to follow Right okay so what we've got going on here is um, I've got the AC side um, connected up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my heat gun across the fuse in this plug which goes to the inverter. If the heat gun comes on that means that there's still a short circuit on the AC side and there's still a fault. On my output um, I've actually got a relay with a 24 volt coil. What happens with that is that separate solar charge controller there I'm just using that as a low voltage cutoff, so I think 
when my battery gets down to about, I don't know, say 25 volts, I'll cut the AC side of the inverter off and it prevents the battery from being discharged any further. And it's just so, it's just basically just to get rid of extra power really. So it's not running off the battery all the time. Right, so I'm going to flip the switch here. I want to put my heat gun across where the fuse is and we do not want it to come on so I'll just need to find the plug for my heat gun heat gun switched on so I'll do this very very carefully Very slight, very tiny little spark, so that's normal, the heat gun and everything came on, so I can see thus far that the fault seems fixed, but I'll still have to power it up and do a proper test. So I just ran in the house to get a fuse, um, I did have a 3 amp fuse in it, um, I'll put a 5 amp one in, that should do. I don't like the idea um, of a 13 amp fuse in it because when I first got it that's what it had and I think that's uh, just a bit stupid because the inverter itself I don't know it's, it's only 500 watts so I'm talking about maybe not even 2 amps maximum output current right then DC side is connected red light is on I'm going to now apply power on the AC side. Hmm. Nothing seems to be happening, unfortunately. Yes, that's because I haven't energised the relay. I'll just energise that now. Stay in there. Uh, I'll just run it at quite low power because there's no heat sink on uh, part of it. So, it does seem to be working, so that's good. Um, I have added a modification, there was actually a little trim pot inside up there, and I've extended it. And it turns out that that can let you ad adjust the power that it pulls. I don't know what's going on there, but whenever I touch it, the buzzing stops. Hmm. But anyway, it seems to be working, so that's fine. We'll get it all put back together and the oil poured back in. Right, so we have it connected up now, and um, it seems to be working. Um, so, I'll turn up the power. This is input to power here. I want to get to max out pretty much just for a test. So what I'm doing is I am just discharging my electric bike batteries into it just now because I had charged them up but the weather wasn't very good so I decided um, not to go out so I'll just get rid of that power into here and just feed it back into the grid. I charged it off solar the other day there, so that's not too bad. Right, so everything seems to be running quite well, 26 amps in. Um, and we've got 530, yeah, about 500 or so watts coming out, so it seems to be holding power um, quite well. And I will update on any developments.